Hi everyone, it's Lily. Today we're going to do a comprehensive introduction to acrylic pouring. Acrylic pouring is a method of abstract painting by using a method of dripping or pouring rather than using a brush. So the way we do that is we use paint of a pouring consistency. This is my recipe for pouring medium. What I do is I use Elmer's Glue All and I mix it to varying degrees according to the thickness of the paint that I use. So, um, let, me, let me use white because I use white in probably all my pores. So I'm using a soft body paint. So it comes out soft, creamy, and sort of like the thickness of toothpaste. So what I have done is I have mixed Elmer's Glue All and I've mixed mine, well, I didn't exactly mix mine right today because I just made a new batch. So what you do is you just add some Elmer's glue all and some water and you dilute it according to the paints that you're using. I'm using soft body paint, so I add quite a bit to my Elmer's glue all to thin it out so that I don't have to add as much water to my consistency for pouring and that consistency should be where it comes off the stick stick in a stream I'm gonna mix this real fast for you so see well that comes off pretty good but if you mix your paint too thick and it doesn't dry properly you're going to get crazing and crazing looks like grooves in your painting Okay, and for some craft paints, and what I do is I thin mine by adding water. And I found that if I use a spray bottle to add water, it seems to make it a little bit easier to stir in. Okay, so that's how we mix our paints with my particular pouring medium. And white is one of the thickest colors, or the thickest density, or viscosity. All of those words are used to describe the thickness of a paint. So, okay. so we like to, we need to use both transparent and opaque colors. Opaque colors are colors that you cannot see through. Transparent colors are colors that you can see through when they are laid across another color. Now, if you're using craft paints, they're a lot thinner, so you would make your pouring medium thicker, okay? All neon colors in craft paints are the transparent ones. And you need to know that because they're not going to be marked anywhere on the bottle. Okay, and these paints are also not marked on the bottle. And the opaque, opaque paints and transparent paints are true throughout oil paints, acrylic paints, and throughout every brand of paint. Uh, they don't make an, a transparent white paint in a different brand, and lemon yellow is, is transparent no matter what brand you buy or type of paint, whether it's oil or acrylic. Let's okay, I, which I should say is that I have a bit of a cold, so if I misspeak during this video, the correct thing will be written across, so I'll correct myself with the subtitles. Uh, I also Okay, so I forgot to tell you that I use 20 to 30% of my DIY pouring medium mixed with the paint to make the paint so it's pourable. Um, this is a, the earth, the paints that come from the earth, which you will learn in time, are heavier paints and they are usually opaque and they're heavier, so they will sink to the bottom. Okay, this is phthalo blue. It's a transparent color. Uh, the color next to it I have is medium yellow and it's semi-transparent. There's a color called lemon yellow and that color is very transparent it's a very light color and it doesn't have a lot of tinting strength okay and my favorite color here you'll see me use in many videos is rose red I love that color and it's transparent I just love it I use it in my uh, oil paintings or when I'm doing portraits I love that color okay what else 
if you still are confused, I want you to Google the transparent and opaque colors as you're using them. And okay, let's talk about silicone. There are several types of silicone. There's treadmill silicone. For me, it tends to make really tiny cells and millions of them. It comes in drip, drip containers, spray containers, and it's not aerosol. Okay, there's blaster silicone. It's a different brand. And each one of them contains different types of chemicals. I found that the treadmill silicone is the safest. Why? Because we're going to use a torch to heat up the paint to get the silicone to rise to the top and create cells. You can also... If you layer the paint just right, the opaque paint will sink down through the transparent paint, creating cells. So, but the silicone is really the easiest way to create cells, and that's kind of like the basis of acrylic pouring. So this is a butane torch, not a propane torch, and I got mine at Walmart, and you can also get them at um, cake decorating places or at Bath & Beyond. So hopefully I'm covering everything. See how this is transparent? This is phthalo blue, and this is an earth color. It's thick. If we take this paint right here, and I go over it, you will see that color in between. See how you can see the color? The color that's under it? That's how you can test your transparent paint if you don't have a way to use Google. But eventually, you'll just get to know by looking at them and using them. Okay, so let's go over again how much pouring medium you add to your paints. Uh, I'm not going to make that specific because it's not it doesn't have to be. Just have fun with it. It's an experiment. You just, you know, add some Elmer's glue to water, mix it up, throw some paint in a cup, add some pouring medium to it. You can also use Liquitex pouring medium, uh, golden glazing liquid. It, any, There's just so many things you can try and you can watch other people's videos. Uh, Anne Marie Ritteroff has great videos. Uh, I can't think of any others right now, but uh, a lot of people have different pouring uh, recipes that they use and so for me I just want you to relax use some Elmer's glue mix it with water add it to your paints and get it to drip off the stick there there it goes that's how it looks on the stick so we're gonna mix up some paints here we go let me see and layering the paints for me this is my way. This is not everybody's way. I don't like to put too many layers of opaque paint over the transparent paint because the transparent paint has to rise up through the opaque paint to create the cells. So I layer my paints, opaque, transparent, opaque, transparent. Some people take, uh, say, powder blue, powder pink, white and uh, and then put all those in the cup first pour them in first and then they put their transparent colors and it works for them I just never want to waste my paint and have it not work that's just my personality uh, it's just the way I do it so see how the white is thick it's just thicker than the other colors all right I don't want to make this video too long so yes of course we use pops popsicle sticks tacks on the back of your uh, things to hold it up make sure your your surface here is level otherwise the paint will drip all off the sides of one or the other and you'll end up doing this and, and trying to do it and you wake up in the morning and all your paint has run off also when you dry your paintings make sure that there's airflow underneath as well as on top what can happen is when you dry your painting I'll, I'll finish telling you this while I'm pouring. One more thing, metallic paint is heavy and every time we try to use it, it seems to sink in our painting and we don't get much. Some people have perfected it. I've tried it a few times and I like to save my uh, metallic paints for different projects so I don't tend to use it much because gold is such a middle of the road color it's not high key it's not low key it's mid-range tone so I don't waste it in my acrylic pores
Okay, while I'm thinking of it, I would really love to thank the people who are sponsoring my channel. I'll put you guys in right here. Boop. And uh, I really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for helping me out buying my materials and whatnot. Okay, uh, what I want to say before we get going is that as a new pour, you're going to be anxious to get to pouring. But the mixing of the colors and getting them consistent is the most important thing. It should take you at least 20 minutes to make sure each cup is the same consistency, thickness, get them right. Because that way you'll have more success and you'll be happy and you'll wanna to continue to be an acrylic pouring uh, artist. Okay, so I'm going to put in two squirts of my treadmill silicone. It's not an exact science. Make sure it doesn't get on your canvas. I do it the way I feel like it. That's what you should do too. You could get silicone overload. And that will create big pockets, big like sinkholes in your painting. Don't do that. Also, real quick, uh, under the video, this uh, this might be helpful for, for beginners, and I'm just saying that for the only reason is, hit like on this video. And you know, not because I want a lot of likes on my video, it doesn't matter, but if you hit like, you'll be able to save it and re you know return to it. So that's under the video. Everybody knows where the like button is. Also, leave a comment, ask a question. I do answer my comments. So, yeah, and then if you subscribe and hit the bell, when I answer the, your comment, you'll get notified. You'll just get a little notification that I've answered your question. And uh, I think I may do a follow-up video, do a second pour that would be maybe a little bit more advanced. So if you want big cells, you stir a little, like that would be to get big cells. And if you want uh, tiny cells, you stir in that silicone really good, real fast. Okay, so give me a shot glass, one I can clean out and reuse every time, not to waste plastic, and I reuse these. So I'm gonna put, a, I like yellow, I'm gonna put some of that in first. And I don't want to overload my cup because it's a tiny canvas and I forget. So I'm gonna, that's semi-transparent. I don't know, let's let's take a difference. Let, let's, uh, one of the ways you could do it is go like that. See what's gonna happen so you don't get mud. Say, oh, that'll be, that'll work out. So then pour from up high so the color can go to the bottom and bounce back up. And so that's how it mixes. I tend not to stir my cups because I don't want to have mud. That's how you get a muddy painting. Also, less the less colors you use, the more successful your pores will be. And as you get a trained eye, you will begin to appreciate less colors on your canvas. So uh, I guess we'll just do a basic pour. Let's do a flip, turn it over. All right, so something I've learned over the year is if you release the cup a little bit, it'll allow the, the yellow paint that's on the bottom to get down there you know, in time. Because sometimes you pull your cup off and you get no yellow because it's on the top. And this is a tiny painting. So I'm gonna release it a little. A little bit. I'm gonna have a lot of a blue. Here we go. Beautiful. That is pretty. So the traditional way would be to pour torch and then tilt because you don't want to tilt too much to get, oh, my two times Sally, she worked first time. Okay, so you don't want to hold the torch too close. So I like, I, I think I kind of like the whole thing. So let's see which way we should tilt. It's pretty. I'm gonna to continue to tilt some of the blue off. Um, I try to think of the composition of the painting as I'm tilting. Uh, 
Okay, we're going to have to tilt this way. I'm going to leave it. I like it. I'm going to add a little white right here. So I, I'm not going to over tilt my painting until the cells are out of round. It's not pretty. It's zigzaggy. I'm going to instead add some paint to the corners. Okay, so that's it, you guys. I'm going to take it down. There you have it. That is your first acrylic pour, and I know it will turn out for you. So thanks for watching. Uh, please be kind to all kind.